Welcome everybody. This is Activities Across Grade Levels. This week it is cool ways teachers can use the summer, which we're going to have a whole lot of fun with because as I have said before, if you are not having fun as an educator, you are probably doing it wrong. Now, some thank yous are going to go out. The first thank you goes to you for joining us. Thank you for being part of the webinar series that we do at Next Vista for Learning. We got loads of different things we love to share. And I also want to thank you because you're an educator and at a time like this, it is all the more important that we recognize our role as, as people who give children hope for a better future for themselves, for the community, that we can begin to build a more just society. And so I appreciate that you are a part of the effort to make that happen. Additionally, I want to say specific uh, shout outs to all of the cool folks in Fowler USD. Susan, you know, I, Susan's district there, all the good people who kind of join in on the recording, who are live, lots of good folks there. All the good folks up in Jerome, I, I work with you know, all these good people at Fall City Academy and uh, Jerome High School and uh, Summit Elementary, go fish, right? And love that you guys are a part of this as well. Always like to hang, hang out a nice uh, thanks to Richard Byrne of Free Tech for Teachers who helps us out. Uh, by spreading the word, and he and I do a Friday webinar called Not So Creatively. Two ed tech guys take questions and share cool stuff, and we have a lot of fun with it. We have good things to share. You may have questions that, that we can answer. You may have questions that we can't, but pretty much we're always going to get something to share there, so good fun there. Hope you will join in on that. Now, uh, you need to meet these folks who, who, are, who are saying hello today. We're going to start with Susan, my partner in crime on the activities across uh, grade levels uh, webinar. Susan, introduce yourself, please. Hello, friends. I see so many familiar faces, but uh, for those of you who have, are here for the first time, I know we had a couple first-time callers, right? Uh, my name is Susan Stewart. I'm an instructional technology teacher on special assignment uh, from California. Now, before teaching uh, technology to teachers, right, I support 120 amazing teachers in my district. Before that, I spent 14 years teaching kindergarten and grade two, so uh, my background, of course, is in the early childhood education, but I am um, really excited to be a part of this series with Russian because I always learn a ton. I may be here to share, but I learn something every time I'm here. Part of the fun of it for sure. My name is Rushton, Rushton Hurley. I am a former high school teacher of Japanese language, former middle school teacher of video production, a former principal of a K-12 school, former principal of an online high school. Now I run a little, uh, little nonprofit to save the world from ignorance. I also happen to be in this ed tech space where people like me and Susan find all these other wildly cool people out there and, and become friends with them. And one of them is joining us today and I am so very jazzed about it. We would like to welcome Donnie. Donnie, introduce yourself. Hey guys, so my name is Donnie Piercy. I, I teach fifth grade. I, I live and work in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm originally from Massachusetts. I lived in Alabama for a while, but for the past 14 years, I've taught fifth grade. Uh, here in Lexington, and I'm really excited to share a little bit with you all today. Excellent. Donnie is an amazing guy on all sorts of fronts. He has done all kinds of cool things with National Geographic, including a, a trip on a, on a boat that went uh, up and down a lot on its way to Antarctica. He has uh, helped with the, the uh, digital citizenship curriculum uh, that's part of Google and just is just generally a fun guy. And if you have never listened to the Partial Credit Podcast, and this is something we're going to encourage you to do before it's all over and done with today. So my little nonprofit, Next Vista for Learning, is a free video library by and for teachers and students everywhere, free to use, free to contribute to, free to download from, all for a student audience, all screen content. It's my own little attempt to save the universe from ignorance, one creator video at a time. Bing! All right, so that's me. Um, and we have got videos that are all about academic stuff, light bulbs. We've got community things, global views. We've got service videos and seeing service. We've got sets for careers for English language. And we hope that that will be of interest to you because it would be great fun for us to highlight videos that your kids make to help other kids learn stuff and to realize uh, that they have something to share as they go as well. So how this is going to work? Well, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about things at different age levels, right? And we're going to start with the young learners, and and we have the the one of the great contributors to the hashtag K2Can2 with us uh, every week. That would be Susan. Susan, get us going. Hi, friends. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's talk about young learners and the summer. You know, I'm starting here just thinking about kids and when it's possible and safe. I know sometimes as teachers we really like to just slam that book shut. Done but we've had a different kind of year, right? So anything you can do that's possible and safe to 
maybe leave that Seesaw Classroom connected or maybe leave that Google Classroom on. If you're finding that it's something you're willing to do, to stay connected just a little longer, I think our kids would benefit from that, just having some kind of normalcy. Now, I'm not talking about the old fashioned times when give them a 40 page packet to work on over the summer, but perhaps you may wanna leave a little present, a few presents for them in those subscriptions. An example here I see is this backyard scavenger hunt for Seesaw. If you could find a few of those, like, and I just, today I did a quick search on summer activities in Seesaw and just leave them in there because you know our kids might want something to do they might want something fun and productive and it's like they're still with you and i know we haven't been with our kids the way we'd like to be so if we could you know give them a little bit more engagement have them something fun and meaningful to do that goes beyond you know sitting in front of the not that kids do that but sitting in front of the television all day we can have them searching being productive maybe give them scavenger hunts or activities and if if that's possible you know some districts do encourage you to disconnect or they shut things down on your behalf but giving them that extended learning. You know, we use a program that's skills practice and we're gonna keep it running through um, June 30th, even though our school is ending very soon. Just so kids, if, they, if the parents want that routine and kids are thriving, having something to do each day that's productive and meaningful and adaptive to their learning, you know, if that's an option for you, try to keep that going. And again, those summer bonus activities, this isn't the page of math facts to do all summer long, but maybe you can find some of those bonus activities to assign in those places, that would be awesome. The second thing I'm gonna really talk about here is curating all the things. When I say curate all the things, on the next page you'll see one particular example of that. And here, this is uh, an epic collection. So if you're not using the, the book, book collection, Epic Book for Kids, right? It's a free resource for books. But one thing about teacher, I'm a, I'm a busy teacher, I have a lot going on. How could I get myself ready for next year in a way that's kind of low impact, doesn't take a lot of me? Well, maybe one day I can think about what units are earlier in the year, right? And maybe one day I could just kind of sit around and, and curate that collection of resources and start making what they call those collections within Epic. I think of the same thing with YouTube. Maybe you start some YouTube playlists for, for fall. Perhaps you go through something like Seesaw and just curate some, some resources. So, you know, we're not assigning them, we're not doing lesson plans, but just kind of spending some time. For me, sometimes I'm waiting in the doctor's office and I like to just read nonsense news. And sometimes I might just sit there and heart some books on Epic, right? Ooh, there's a book about these. There's a book about these. There's a book about these. Ooh, this one's the right level for my kids. And just do some curation just as a, a, a thing to do to get myself ready for next year without having to get in too deep. So I love the idea of curating resources. YouTube, Seesaw, Epic, just to get myself ready without having to commit too much, right? <laughs> With that, we're going we're gonna to move to upper elementary. And so we bring in our guest for the week, Donnie. And Donnie, start talking to us about, uh, about some of the cool things that you are thinking about with regard to the summer. Sure. So, Russian, if you, would you mind if I could share my screen for a minute? I'm going to switch free. over to me. And I'll switch over to my kind of Google Chrome here, just so that way I can get that up and running. You have to ask, right, can you all see my screen? Just checking. You should see a couple of tabs open. Um, so what we're going to talk about real quick is just a few ideas as far as getting ready for, you know, the upcoming fall, you know, who knows what that's going to look like by this point. Three things that I've done in the past just to start to get ready for the fall, for that incoming class of students. Um, things a little bit different, but um, are, are pretty simple using uh, some Google tools. Um, the first one, right, and this is something I started doing four or five years ago when um, I, I just wanted to know where the students in my class live. And so, you know, I've recently learned about a tool called MyMaps, which if you've never heard of it before, um, if you do a Google search for MyMaps, this will be the, the first link that pops up. And what MyMaps allows you to do is it allows you to create your own maps. And so what I like to do every year is I'll go into the, our student information system. We use Infinite Campus. I know the different school districts use different things. Um, but typically next to that, you will find those student addresses, right? And you click on their names and see where they live. Now, um, you can either go and manually type in those addresses right here, or um, again, these are not real addresses right here. I actually went and Googled where famous celebrities live and just changed their names. But if you go into a Google Sheets, create a sheet where up the top you have the student name, their address. When you go into My Maps after you make one, you can click the button right here that says Import, 
you can go into your Google Drive, click on that recent button right there. And as long as it was the last thing that was open, you should be able to, there you go, let's see, there it is. Click on that and open it up. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask, hey, what column do you wanna use to position your place marks? Well, in the case of this, it's just gonna be the student addresses. Then it says, what do you wanna title your markers? You can press student name. Then when you press finish, what it does is it searches the whole map for those addresses that you just pulled from the student information system. And within two seconds, you have a map of all 30, 35, or even if you teach, you know, 120 kids at your grade level, I mean, you now have a map of where all of them live. And you can customize this map if you want. You can change the place mark. You can even um, add it where it's their own with their images on there. So if you want to see like the faces of your students before you even get a chance to meet them, or even if you know that you're going to be going remote in the fall and you want to stop by, uh, do some distance learning and say hello from a distance or drop something off. Simple idea. Um, next idea I wanted to kind of jump to on here. Um, you know, we've all done that activity in the past um, where we, we've had that classroom economy, right? That, that, that class bank where it's like, you know, you pass out the fake money and, you know, a lot of times you'll spend all summer long getting that, that ready for the, the fall. Well, I built a Google Sheet, which you can actually, if you click here, and Russian said that he'll share this, uh, these slides afterwards, but where it says make a copy of this spreadsheet, if you click there, it'll give you access to this. And this is just a, a simple little bank template that I put together. However, what's cool about it, the dates that are right here, um, when it actually comes to those dates, it'll pay the students however amount of money that you tell them to, uh, that you tell it to. So for example, I'm just gonna change this date right here to 6-1-2020, right? And then boom, you know, you'll see that it went and deposited and then it even went and changed it where a week from here on out, it'll deposit that money into the student's bank account. And again, depending on how you do your class store, maybe you do it digitally, maybe you on Fridays, they come up and you know, they, they say like, oh, I'd like to purchase this M&M or this Jolly Rancher, or I'd like to help out another teacher. Um, once you make this for each individual student, you can then say, you know, paid to help out another teacher. Um, you can type in the amount. Let's see, it's maybe $35 of pretend money for that. Type it in, and then you'll see it deposited that money automatically from their account. So you can make one of those for every student in your classroom. It takes a little bit of setup. That's why I like to do it in the summertime. So once you get your class list, kind of put that together. Last thing. And this is something too that you can spend this summer getting ready for. Um, something I've done for the past four or five years, um, you know, this kind of plays off the classroom economy idea, um, is that first week of school, I give my students the option to either mortgage or rent their seat. And on this slide right here, if you click this little link, it'll pop up, it'll take you to the sheet that um, I print off and I give a physical copy of to my students, again, you can, you know, obviously change my name to your name. It's right there. You can see this is from last year. I haven't changed it yet, but they have the option, right? They can either purchase their seat, which I loan to them for $400, and they have to repay me back every month um, until it's paid off, or they can choose to rent their seat, which is a significantly lower amount, right? But they kind of are locked into a rental agreement. And so that first week of student school, this is all tied to our school bank account, students have to try to figure out, okay, well, which option do I want to do? Do I want more money now where I'm not paying as much or more money in the future where I can completely pay off my loan and I own my seat? One little fun thing that I do with, with my class, we kind of turn it into classroom monopoly. Once they pay off their mortgage, if they choose to do that, they then have the option to start to buy other students in the classroom seats, ones who are either renting or those who haven't paid off their mortgage yet. And why they like to do that is once they own somebody else's seat, that other student's rent payment then starts to go into their bank account. So it's kind of a cool little monopoly system that we have going on. I've used it in my class for the past couple of years. Students really get into it. 
it takes a little bit of setup in the summertime. I've seen teachers who've done this where they build like a giant monopoly board that they've stuck up on their bulletin board. Um, but you know, lots of ways that you can use this and all the stuff that I just showed is just linked on that slideshow. So if you'd like to click through and brush and I'm going to stop screen sharing now. I don't know if it'll automatically transfer back to you, but I'm I'll just go ahead sharing. and grab. There's a question. There's a question in the chat for you from Frank. Do you create a new okay. for each student or make a tab for each student within the sheet? Good so question. you would make a, this is why it's something that you should spend time doing over the summer. Um, you can make a new sheet for each student. And if you use Google Classroom, right, you could also make a copy of it for each student and give them view only access. So that way it kind of, you know, does it automatically for you from the start. Um, but you can set that all up. You can even put each one on its own unique link. But as long as they only have view only access, it's kind of just like they're logging into a bank account, right? So lots of ways you can use that. And again, feel free to click through that and uh, use what you like. Very, very cool. And good question, Frank, thanks. So at this point, we normally move to middle school, which we are going to do, but just to be tricky, it's high school too, what? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you several things. We kind of hit both secondary options on this, and hopefully this will be of intrigue to you. So here we go. The first thing uh, we're gonna talk about here is, is the idea of creating uh, like a group with, uh, with some, of your, some of your colleagues and explore the cool group. And what you do is you just say, all right, you know, like, you know, you and, and me and, and this other person, we're gonna get together on Zoom once a week or whatever it might be, and, and your job is to bring something cool to the table each time, all right? So, so, so what, is it, what is it that's cool that you've run across? Wow, you know, I mean, like I, I found this teacher talking about, uh, you know, a program where they do classroom monopoly and they rent or mortgage their seats, and I think it's amazingly cool. All right, cool, yeah, let's talk about how we might use that. So where, where it will be this kind of exploratory brainstorming, uh, kind of fun, you know, culture that, that you're building. And, you know, will everybody make it every week? Maybe not, but you know, that's not the thing. You know, you're, you're, you're just coming up with these, with these ideas. Some people check out completely. I'll, I'll, fine. All right. You know, there, there, there is an argument for doing such things. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you can, if you can come up with tons of cool ideas over the course of the summer that, that just kind of get you excited about something new, just kind of keep your, your wheels turning a good move. Next thing I'm going to mention is that if you haven't learned to create a simple video, Summer's a good time to do it. And I am gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you a little bit uh, about Adobe Spark. I think Adobe Spark is this just kind of wildly cool little thing that's out there. Let's get a little link there in, in the chat for you. If you have never seen Spark, uh, several things you need to know about it. You know, you find out that it's Adobe, you're like, oh my God, how much does it cost? It's free, you're kidding, no? Okay, so anyway, so what this is, um, is, is you look at it and you're like, that looks an awful lot like, say, PowerPoint to me. It does, but, but what that is, is each, each of the slides, slides is actually a clip in the video we're making. So what you do is you go into the middle here and you click on the little plus and you said you want you know, video, that's like something you upload from the device that you're using, uh, or text, photo, or icon. I'll start with text. I'm just gonna say summer. And we'll just make it a little bit bigger because why not? And everything's bigger in Texas after all. So here's the second one. And, and I'm gonna say, let's add a little icon and I'm gonna say, do a search on summer. And it says, okay, well, there gotta be some good icons for summer. And indeed there are, uh, because we're here in California. I mean, we have to have to get something that's kind of vaguely beach-ish. Uh, and that becomes like, okay, that, that's, that's an icon for summer, great. So I'm gonna create another one of these guys. I'm gonna say photo. It's automatically gonna search on summer for mostly unsplash, I think actually all perhaps unsplash options, all right, where, where you're kind of pulling, pulling some different pieces in there and you can even see who did it here. I don't know if you can tell if that's big enough, but it's by Lei Huang, right? And you'd be able to use that as a part of it too. All right, now, why is this all cool? Because at this point, we've just got text and an icon and a picture. It's this little guy right here, right? So let's start back over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click and hold. Here we are talking about the summer. Summer may be a time to go to the beach. But that doesn't mean you can't read some cool stuff and come up with cool ideas for what you might be doing with all of the great little kiddos that are gonna, are gonna flock your way in the fall. All right, now if you hold that long enough, by the way, it tells you, keep it short, which is probably good advice, you know? And what it, what it does is it creates a video for you. So let me show you kind of what this looks like. I'm gonna click on the play, watch. Here we are talking about the summer. Summer may be a time to go to the beach. 
But that doesn't mean you can't read some cool stuff and come up with cool ideas for what you might be doing with all of the great little kiddos that are gonna, are gonna flock your way in the fall. Note that it tosses some credits in for you. How awesome is that? Now, you can share these, uh, and when you share it, by the way, that, that creates a link that takes you to an Adobe page. Well, why not just stick it on YouTube? YouTube's great, but there are a lot of distractions on a YouTube page, and being able to uh, just have this kind of simplified page can be nice. All right, so you know the links can be placed in, uh, in, in, a, in an email, it can be placed in a form, it can be put in an assignment in Classroom, see, so whatever you're using, right, you, know, you, you can add links that way. You can also download it as an MP4, and that gives you the opportunity to, uh, uh, you know, to, to kind of pull these, these different things together with other stuff if you want to edit in some, you know, iMovie or, or whatever you like. Uh, you've got choices over, over the music here. You can turn it off. You can add your own. Uh, themes allow you to, to change kind of the look of it and the font and the transition. That all happens as a package. You don't change those individually. Oh, but I don't want to change them individually. Can't, sorry. So anyway, that's, that's, how, that's how that works. It's a good little tool. And, uh, and, and as I see it, you know, if you're, if you're making kind of simple little videos as a part of what you create for your class, all the more interesting, they're useful for kids being able to come back to them and watch them again and again if you're explaining something, things like that. Third thing we want to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about the idea that if we've got, you know, if we've got like a group of kids that Susan, like Susan was talking about this before, like if you're still in touch with these kids, you know, you want to give them the chance to connect, awesome idea. Why not also get them to create like little videos or, or even slides that would be advice for kids next year? So whatever it is about you or your class or your subject, you know, they might be able to say, hey, guys, it's really important to do X, Y, or Z. And it's just all the more useful coming from them than you because, say, we're, we're adults and they're not. And sometimes you need to vary the presentation of content, let's just say. So Flipgrid's another good tool for that as well, you know, and, and it's kind of fun for the, uh, for the kids to see people, they know, hey, that's, that's my cousin Barry, you know, that kind of stuff. So feel free to, to do stuff like that. Now, once we get to August, once we get to August, uh, if you can get the email addresses of your students, you know, that you're going to have, especially if they're coming into your school, like they're coming in as incoming sixth or ninth graders or something like this, and they're like, oh, school, right? And, and, and you get to know them ahead, ahead of time by giving them like these little challenges. And, and, and you know, maybe it's just sharing a couple of cool thoughts, uh, you know, a little bit about themselves. Check everything before it goes through, of course. But, but you can find some really cool stuff to share with. Uh, I am a huge fan of a recently released video called Building the Perfect Squirrel Proof Bird Feeder. And if you have not seen this video, man, you need to spend 22 minutes watching this because it is more fun than most people should be allowed to have. Uh, great stuff. No animals were, were damaged as a part of the making of that film. Um, and then lastly, I would say that you should, you should look at, at some gamified learning and try it out yourself. If you haven't tried the Duolingo app, uh, you know, pull that out and, and, you know, say, start dusting off your high school Spanish or whatever it is, just as a way of, of seeing, not, not just developing your language, right, but seeing a particularly interesting model for gamifying learning. That could be a cool thing to do over the course of the summer, give you a chance to, uh, to begin thinking, well, how, how might I, you know, kind of add some badges or some opportunities and things like that in my class, whether online or in person, probably more likely to be online as, as we get started uh, in the fall. But just how can we build those things into it? Experience some of that yourself so that it's not just an idea that you, you kind of launch once things start in, in August or September. It's something you've actually played with. So with that, we get to the section of our little show called Promising Resources. And we got, we got a few fun ones that we'll speak very briefly about. You should start listening to a cool podcast. And like I said, we've got a member of the partial credit team. Donnie, give us, give us the, the one paragraph description of partial credit. Yeah, so partial credit was started by uh, me, my friend Jesse Ladinsky, and my other friend. They're not my only friends, but we're all friends. Uh, Jeffrey Heil. About two years ago, about 55 episodes in right now, but the idea behind the, the podcast is all three of us love pop culture. We're all classroom teachers or work in education in some way, shape, or form. And so each week we usually typically bring, usually typically, I think you can say that, uh, typically bring on a, a guest who one might be doing something unique in the classroom. We might play a game or two, but we definitely encourage you all to come on and download a few episodes. You can uh, subscribe, run, about every podcast service, or if you just want to listen to some episodes, you can find us at partial dot 
.credits, which that is actually our website. We were very happy to learn that you can buy .credit domains. So we're like, we will purchase parcel .credit for twelve ninety nine a year. So there you go. Awesome. I believe that you guys, uh, your tagline is something like uh, education, pop culture, and shenanigans. Yeah, sometimes it's more shenanigans than the, the education piece. But don't I, I have listened to your, your podcast at times and thought, there's got to be something other than shenanigans going on here. But, uh, <laughs> but, but it's, just, it's just kind of fun to listen to these three guys go, go at it regardless. So I hope you'll give that a look. Uh, if you, if you kind of, you know, if one of the things you do is you, you watch like a Next Vista webinar and you're like, man, they find a lot of really nice pictures to use. Unsplash is my go-to on this. There's a lot of cool things out there that, that, that you can find in terms of legally available free stuff, right? But, but my go-to is unsplash.com. I would encourage you to give that a good look. And even though legally you don't have to cite your source uh, with Unsplash, you of course should because you need to model that for the kids just saying. Uh, and then finally, uh, you know, when, when the kids come into your class, you know, whatever that means uh, this fall, you know, think in terms of how do they get to know you? And, and maybe you just create a little digital book tell, telling a little bit about, you know, who you are and your, your expectations and stuff like that. Have a little fun with it. Book creator is a great way to do it. You can add like little audio pieces or, you know, video, you know, video bits and bobs as well. And so if you haven't played with that, I would encourage you to do so. Why do we do these things? We do these things because at a time like this, there is a whole lot of stress, right? I mean, you know, kids are like, oh my God, you know, I haven't been, I haven't been at, to school in three months. I miss my friends. Uh, I'm really, really tired of my brother, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, and, and so they, they need that connection. And as teachers, we are the people who, who you know, find ways to make that happen and, and to connect them with their sense of the possible. So what we do is we care, right? We care for these kids. We care for their learning. In order to do that right, we care for ourselves. The kind of stuff that we're talking about you know, that you might try over the next few months is fun, right? And, and engaging a little fun and how you bring that into what you do makes a big difference. All right. So my little nonprofit has a newsletter that I send out at the beginning of every month. I hope you will give it a look. Uh, there's loads in it, uh, loads of free stuff, stuff you might want to watch, read, try, listen to, uh, stuff engage in, some ideas, all that kind of stuff. So feel free to give it a look. Uh, and if you have any questions at all about that, let me know. I write. I've got, uh, I've got a little blog called Inspiring Improvement. And I've written books about becoming better as a teacher, helping your school become better, and uh, leaders using tech as a way to make very cool things happen with your, your school and professional community. So, and there they are, right? So feel free once you get these slides, which you will, I will write each and every one of you who registered after all of this to, to send you the link to say, hey, you know, we've got the, the video posted once it's actually processed and posted uh, and, and the little resources that we make as a part of that. If you have some questions, feel free to stick around because after we stop the recording, we keep talking to you guys. That's part of the fun of what this webinar is, right? You know, we bring on fun people like Donnie and Donnie's like, oh, uh, with regard to your question, uh, you know, shenanigans. And then they talk about those things and it's good fun. So join us next week uh, where we'll, we were going to focus on the cool of digital citizenship. And you're like, is that cool? It's very cool. And we're going to have fun with it. And we hope you will be involved. All right, Donnie, take us home. Yeah, so I'd love to connect with you all. You know, I put our uh, podcast website on there at uh, parcel.credit, but if you guys are on Twitter, uh, you can hit me up at parcel.credit, uh, sorry, at Mr. Piercy. Uh, you, but make sure you get the, I have a hidden E in my name that, you know, everybody seems to miss, but at Mr. P-I-E-R-C-E-Y, I love to connect with you all. And again, feel free to drop me any questions there or, or here kind of after we're done. Matter of fact, uh, you, you'll be able to get to them via the link on the slide or the link in the doc. We have a doc that we, we let you know about that has all the links that we, we reference and that, that come up in the, in the chat as we go as well. That's part of the fun of it. Susan, what do you think is the fun of it? Oh, the fun of it is just being here with y'all learning. I know this summer of all summers is gonna be a little different. Like this year has been different. Uh, and we've learned a lot about that connecting piece, right? Connect with me at Tech Coach Susan. And remember, connect with your kids. Continue connecting with them because we were unnaturally disconnected from them this year. And then next year, you know, we might really need to focus on starting those community building activities as soon as we can. If you get a cat class list, start trying to make those connections. We don't know what the fall is going to look like. But right now, more than ever, as my friend George often says, kids don't need more computers or more technology. They need more humans. They need more connection to the people that matter to them. So whatever we can do to connect, you know, whether it's writing the letter, welcome letter, create the little book, book um, creator video of you, anything like that, that will 
allow them to get to know you and start making those bonds uh, will be amazing. So yeah, connect with me. I'm at Tech Coach Susan. I'm Susan. I'm a tech coach and I'm not very original. Uh, and uh, I can't wait to you know hear from y'all and what you have to do with young learners, especially. I mean, our little learners can do a lot more than people give them credit for. Amen. My name is Rushton. That really is my name. Mother's maiden name. Now you know. Uh, and I am, I am a nonprofit guy that loves to connect with teachers and share ideas and learn so that I can share stuff with others and we can just have a whole lot of fun that way. So with that, I want you to know that, I, that my little nonprofit video library at nextvista.org is waiting for you to go and take a good look around. I hope that that's something that will be fun for you. And we've got all these webinars happening, including you know, the one tomorrow with Richard Byrne. I hope you will, you will give that a look as well. But with that, what I would like to do is wind things down and say, I hope that you are going to have an amazing few days coming up, that you are excited about possibilities that you might have learned with us. And we are happy to keep talking to you even after I stop the recording, which I am about to do in mere seconds. But before that happens, we'll just wave goodbye to all of you who are watching it as a recording. Duh.